Good morning and a very warm welcome to you as we gather for our worship on this, the last day of 2023. We begin our worship as we turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather for worship, we do so with the purpose of keeping focused on you. We do so, Lord, recognizing that you're our Lord, our God, our King. And so, Lord, we bring to you our worship in this moment. We come, Lord, recognizing that you've sustained us through this past year, knowing that you have stuff in store for us for the year that lies ahead. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for all this past year. There have been good experiences and maybe there have been bad experiences. We've overcome many situations and maybe we still struggle with others. But Lord, we give you thanks for you have been present in every situation. And so, Lord, in an attitude of gratitude as we gather for worship, we give you praise and thanks for all that is past. But so too, Lord, we look forward to what is to come. And so as we spend time in our worship this morning, we would pray, Lord, that you would receive us as we bring to you all that we are. We would pray, Lord, that through your Spirit, you would bless us through Scripture and interpret that word into our lives. Challenge us. Speak to us. Help us as we head into this new year that lies ahead of us. And so, Lord, we bring to you ourselves, our praise and our worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we join together in our hymn as we worship together. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. And in the third voice, third verse, all praise and thanks to God. The Father now is given. We sing together.
It was St. Francis of Assisi who said these words, Preach the gospel at all times, only when necessary, use words. Often the most powerful witness, the most powerful sermon, or even the most powerful testimony is given and received when we are silent, when we listen. Some interesting trivia about the word listen and silent. I don't know whether you've noticed, but both those words contain exactly the same letters. And so maybe we could say that to listen well, we need to be silent. And being silent helps us to listen well. The novelist and author Taylor Caldwell writes a story in one of her books entitled The Man Who Listens, and she makes this comment. The most desperate need of humanity today is not a new vaccine for a disease. It's not a new religion for a new way of life. Our real need, our most terrible need, is for someone to listen to us. Not as a patient, but as a human soul. Humanity has a deep need to be heard. We, people, need to be heard. And the only way we get heard is if people listen. And we too then need to listen well. A lady by the name of Roberta tells a story of a conversation that she had with her mother-in-law. Her in-laws had been away on holiday and on their trip home, their car had broken down three times and there was quite a story to tell. And as Roberta listened to her mother-in-law telling about all those breakdowns and all the struggles she had, suddenly there was a knock at the door and her mother-in-law said, sorry, I have to leave. But before she said goodbye, she said, and Roberta, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. But thank you most of all for not telling me your worst car story. Do you know someone like that? When you're telling your story, they always end off by telling their better story. How many times has that happened to you? Or have we been guilty of listening to people and then injecting our better story as Christians, we need to listen and hear more. Listen and hear the heart's cry of the people we interact with. Do we really listen? Do we listen to those people around us? With the invention of WhatsApp, Instagram and email and all sorts of other social media platforms, We've got so used to such a fast-paced world. And in our fast-paced world, we have become so used to instant gratification, to the demands for success and the desire and ambition to make sure that we're number one, that we're the best, often at the expense of others. But I think because of our world, because of all of that that surrounds us, we've got so used to it that we've got so used to very poor listening skills. When we really need to talk to someone and we really need them to listen to us, whatever the problem might be, maybe it's issue with a friendship or a struggle with a family member, or maybe even a crisis that you're going through or some hurdle that you need to overcome, and we really need someone to listen the last thing we need in that moment is for them to begin to finish our story with their better story. Inside of us, when that happens, there's things screaming within us saying, wait a minute, stop. I'm the one who needs to talk. I don't want advice. I don't want to hear your story. All I want is for you to listen. All I want is your ear. 
But when we're faced with that kind of situation, what do we often do? We simply patiently wait. And so we talk and we hear their story instead of being able to share our current events. And then we felt we haven't been heard. We haven't been listened to. Or maybe you just discovered a lump or had some medical diagnosis. Maybe you just noticed that your pants are getting a little bit tighter and you're putting on weight. Or maybe you're just struggling or struggling in some relationship or with some issue and you really need to talk to someone. And so you give your friend a call, but then they interrupt with their story. They try and finish your story. We do not listen well. How many times have you done the same thing? How many times have people been sharing their story and you weren't really listening? Maybe you interrupted them to begin to talk about what your experience was or you began to share with them a similar experience but you missed the opportunity of listening well. In our world today, I don't know whether we listen well. Because it is quite possible to listen to someone talk without really hearing what they're saying. Not only is it possible, but it often happens. In fact, it probably happens more than we realize. I know I have sometimes been guilty of that. Been got so distracted, especially when there are a crowd of people around. I get distracted with all the activity and what's happening in the background. And I'm trying to listen, not necessarily to the person speaking, but to other people's conversation. I've had to learn to focus. But in those moments when we get distracted, we miss the chance of sharing somebody's burden. We miss the chance of rubbing souls with that person because we aren't really listening. Are you listening? Are you really listening? Or are you thinking about what needs to happen after you've finished watching our online worship? Are you listening right now? Or are you evaluating? Are you really listening to what God is saying? Or are you grading my preaching? We need to learn to listen well. And so we're going to turn to scripture to read a passage from Matthew's gospel. It's the parable of the sower. And as much as it talks about God speaking to us and us needing to hear God, it can easily be turned around and talking about us listening to others. So hear these words from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus left the house and went to the lakeside, where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it. While the crowd stood on the shore, he used parables to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went out to sow grain. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground, where there was little soil. The seed soon sprouted, because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burnt the young plants. And because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. But some seed fell in good soil, and the plants bore grain. Some 100 grains, others 60, others 30. And Jesus concluded, listen then, if you have ears. We need to be listening well. 
Here are some examples of people who listened well. As a minister, and many ministers experience this, we often get calls from undertakers to assist in funerals where the family or the people are unchurched. On one such occasion, I remember that I was contacted by an undertaker and I insisted on going to go and see the family and I went to the home of a widower to make plans for the funeral service. I introduced myself and he offered me some tea and then he began to talk and talk and talk. And for about half an hour, he talked all about his wife, who she was, what she meant to him, some of the experiences that they'd had, how he felt towards her, how much they'd loved each other. And when he'd finished talking, after about half an hour or so, we prayed together and then we began to talk about the details of the funeral. But for that first half hour, I just let him speak. A few days after the funeral, which took place about a week later, he came to me and he said, I just want to thank you, Ross, for the things that you said to me when you visited me. It meant so much. I'd said nothing. Apart from organizing funeral details, I had said nothing. All I'd done was remain silent and listened. I was present in the situation. And in my presence, with saying nothing, this, yet this man felt cared for, felt heard, felt that God cares for him. In that moment, I had listened well. That widow had been touched by the love of God, not through my words, but through my listening. One of my colleagues who's now retired as a minister, a man by the name of Reverend Ronnie Kaywood tells the story of visiting a recently widowed lady. And in the visit, she invited him in and she began to tell him her story. Ronnie said nothing, but he was so moved by her story that he began to weep as she told the story. And because he began to weep, so she began to cry. You know how that works. Often we set each other off. And Ronnie says that he said very little through the whole visit. But as he was leaving, the lady said to him, Thank you so much for letting me know that it's okay to cry. I haven't cried in years. Sometimes silent listening speaks louder than thunder. Listening well takes time and patience. Listening well looks for Jesus in the context and in the conversation and in the person's life. Listening well helps us choose the correct words to use when needed. Good listening is a deep act of love. Good listening is a deep, deep form of ministry. Listening is one of the easiest things we can ever do, but it's one of the hardest things to get right. James chapter 1 verse 19, you'll remember the verse that says, everyone must be quick to listen but slow to speak and slow to become angry. It's a simple enough principle, but sometimes it's very difficult to live that out. Too often we are slow to hear, quick to speak and quick to become angry. So learning to listen well won't happen overnight. It takes time and it takes patience. And so as we head into this new year, as much as we're grateful for the year that has passed, may I challenge you for this year ahead. Look for Jesus in every situation. Choose your words carefully. But most of all, 
really try to listen well. Because listening well is a deep form of ministry. Listening well is a deep act of loving those around us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your scripture to us and we thank you for your message of listening well. Lord, help us in this year that lies ahead to be people who listen well. Help us, Lord, as we face difficult situations, as we face issues in our personal lives, that there will be those around us who will listen well. But may we, Lord, set for ourselves a goal for 2024 to be people who listen well. For, Lord, there is much need that surrounds us. There are many people that need to be heard. And so, Lord, we would pray for all the needs that surround us. From those very personal things, our personal needs, to the needs of people that we know and meet, to the needs of our country and of our world. We don't have all the answers, but Lord, we do know that loving by listening is a really good place to start. So be with us in this year that lies ahead. Help us, Lord, to take your challenge and help us, Lord, to listen well. We pray this prayer in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Before we sing our final song, I just want to share with you a quote from the theologian Diedrich Bonhoeffer. He said, poor listening diminishes another person, while good listening invites them to exist and matter. And so we conclude our worship together as we sing together our final song. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. May we listen well. Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We're companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bend alone. I will hold the Christ light for you. Joy and sorrow till we 
we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. For of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you. Thank you again for sharing with us in our online worship. We pray that you would have a blessed 2024. And so we conclude our time together as we sing together the sung benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep. God bless. Oh